Should we get started? We have a we have a quorum, right? Yes. Yay! We have a link and we have quorum. <laughs> there we go. Um, Helen said that she's joining as well, but um, we can we can get started. Um, so if folks want to pull up the minutes from the 14th. Um, you know, we talked about uh the um you know potential DEI trainings for city staff. Um and um city staff is on and that looks like about it anyone want to make a move to approve i move to approve jeremy moves to approve i will second all in favor uh, aye. aye yeah any opposed all right we have to make, I think we have to make a motion to approve with, with the agenda, or is that not necessary anymore? Don't we don't know. need to approve the agenda. Okay, okay. done. Yeah. Right. yeah, just if there's any anything else that we want to talk about, we can bring it up in any other business. I just have a question, because I'm not even clear about this. So if I'm a representative of the city, do I vote then on the team or am I really just here to observe the process and be a liaison? Kelly? Uh, no. Uh, so you're the liaison. So you're not um, appointed. Okay. Um, yeah. and so there's a pretty distinct um, set of, of things to do. Um, but that's a good question, Carol. Uh, we can certainly uh, talk about that a little bit more. Okay. Um, and we've got, yeah, Lauren and Je Jennifer as our city council representatives, but they can vote, right? Yeah, cool. And so if Helen uh, joins and runs, yeah, or runs and joins, <laughs> then we can still have her part of this as well. All right, any other public comment or any other business? Um, I'm um, just, I don't know, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. I'm Jeremy. Yeah. Sorry. We can do introductions. Oh, sorry about that. Um, uh, Chair, can I uh, introduce myself? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. please. Let's have um, a so I am Kelly Murphy. I am sort of acting finance director right now and also the assistant city manager. Um, so I'll be transitioning fully into the assistance role pretty soon. Um, but for right now, it's double duty. Um, and so that's that's me. Great. Nice to see you. You too. Glad to have you on, on this committee. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Should we do a quick round of intros? And this uh, ditto for Carol that you're now no yeah. longer just a visitor, but you're part of it. That's great. Michael, do you want to introduce yourself? Is that I'm Mike, Michael Sherman? Yeah. Um, I'm the last standing member of the original uh, <laughs> um, committee, um, which I can't even remember when that when that we were we were created but um i'm a resident of Mont montpelier for going on going on to 37 years and i'm retired uh, but i'm the editor of vermont history the journal of the historical society <clears throat> and this is the that the, the only one of three committees i've been on for the past several years i'm glad to be down to one jeremy <laughs> Hi, Kelly. I'm Jeremy Beaudry, Montpelier resident. Now for so a little over six years, uh, live up on Elm Street near the Nature Center. Um, in my day job, I work for the UVM Health Network. Uh, yeah, I've been on the committees. It's been just about two years, I think. Pellin? Yeah. Morning, everyone. It is very, very nice seeing all of you virtually. <laughs> so it has been a long time. Um, hi, Kelly. I'm Pelin Kohn. Uh, I work for Norwich. Uh, I'm the leadership program um, chair and leadership center director. And I think it has been almost like four years that I'm on this committee. And I'm very happy uh, working this group. We did fantastic thing, I think. <laughs> all the time to be meet. And Lauren or Carol or 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, Carol Plant, I'm the director of the Community Justice Center. Um, I think Kelly knows me pretty well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we all know Lauren too. Good morning and yeah, tech issues, but um, thanks for getting me the link, Shana. Uh, but nice to see you all. I think I know everybody, but great to be with you. And I've been on this committee it's like four years or something. Um, yeah. yeah. Time's all like, a, you know, construct during the past three years of doing it remotely. <laughs> yeah, and Shana, um, your pronouns, I'm up on Kent Street. And um, yeah, work in uh, prescription drug pricing reform um, right now, and um, have also been on the Montpelier Community Fund Board with Michael, who just left. So very exciting. Okay, well, we're going to talk more about like community makeup and charter and things like that in just a second. But before we do for Elks Club project outreach, um, it looks like no one's been able to make it. And we've had, you know, it's a, a lot has happened over the past couple of months. Um, and so maybe just to ground us and kind of why why we're doing this and where we're at. Um, oh, hello, Evelyn. We just did a round of intros. <laughs> sorry, Hi, you want to? Sorry, I'm yeah. back. Go ahead. Um, so I, hi, everybody. I'm Evelyn Prim. I'm the new communications coordinator for the city of Montpelier. Um, I have been trying to make the rounds to all the committees just to put a, a face to this new uh, position. Um, so I, I primarily work with the city manager's office, um, but I also collaborate with everybody else in the in the city administration as well. Great. Hi. Um, we're, oh, sorry, go ahead. Just saying hello. Oh. Thanks. Um, okay, so for the public process, um, kind of where we left off from last time is that I've connected J um, not Jeremy, um, Josh to Creative Discourse because they have the list of people that they did their outreach to that are kind of that public that protected from you know the public, um, and so if they wanted to do outreach there. They've done um, a couple of you know like walkthroughs and other public. Um, the pro uh, uh, spaces to hear public input, um, in including you know including walkthroughs of the of the space, and then for you know committee chairs, um, and other kind of community forums, and so there's like yeah a couple of different phases as they've shared of being able to um like for for the different goals of of engagement at these different stages and now we're in the winter stage which is actually like the quietest one right so there was like a bunch of outreach in the beginning now they're kind of consolidating all of that outreach and being able to make a proposal and then in early like late winter early spring they're going to be some, you know sharing that proposal of the space and asking for feedback there um and so i think you know just thinking about like, what is our role as CJAC to be able to um, facilitate having that be a really robust public process. Um, and uh, we I attached some of the thinking that we had done last meeting. Um, but yeah, let me stop, pause there and open it up for like any big picture reactions, reflections, additions. So I know that there are quite different ideas about that land. Um, it, does anyone have the <clears throat> like a majority uh, wish, right? I keep hearing different things like housing, uh, new recreation center, right? Um, you know, a couple other ideas. I know that they will ask public opinion, but is there any you know, um, trend that winning? I do remember being in a meeting where they said that there were three things that came to the surface, but I'm not remembering what they are. So I'm trying to see if I can pull them up now. But I think it was like housing, recreation, something else. Was there anything about childcare? Um, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Michael. I heard also like moving all the schools there and using like school buildings for housing, you know, 
again, there are so many ideas, but I don't know uh, which one are having the like most uh, attraction. Lauren, were you gonna, coming off a, of, sorry, I can't unmute you. Sorry, having tech problems this morning. Um, I, I mean, I think it's too early to say like at this point, um, the like the bond as it was issued specifically named recreation and housing. So I think there's like been an understanding all along that some version of those will be part of it. And then it's like, what else might be, might the land be used for? Like schools is complicated because that's like a, a different jurisdiction. That, um, so that I would be surprised if that's where they went, but, um, but I love people putting out creative ideas. Um, so I think like right now the, they're doing like the land assessment to be able to understand like the engineering, like what, what are the constraints of the land? What are the opportunities that I think will make the public process like the next phase easier to be like, okay, kind of reality check, like it would be good for X, Y, and Z. Like here's the places, here's like the amount of actual acreage that would be good for different uses. Um, and then go, you know, look at the public feedback so far and then do like the next phase of it with that just kind of like reality check of what's what would really work there um, from a variety of perspectives. And correct me if <laughs> city staff, if that if there's anything to talk about that, but that was my understanding. Uh, uh, you mentioned the third one, you said housing, recreation, and what was the third one, Lauren? I think the only two named in the bond were housing and recreation. Um, the the other one I remember from some of the public meetings was like some portion conserved. Um, I think oh. will be part of it, but just based on like the way the land, the land is, I'm guessing that will probably be part of it. But um, and those three, I think like that that early meeting with um, Paul uh, Costello, but like those were the three buckets that he had kind of oriented the meeting around. Um, but again, I'm not sure what else might come out from the public or the consultants. And I just found my notes, sorry. It, yeah, it looks like the feedback in the fall of 2022 has been housing and recreation plus environmental conservation, agriculture, retail, and education. And then in sp spring of 2023, uh, or sorry, first there's gonna be kind of the opportunities and constraints assessment with public workshops, which will then have um, provide direction to create two or three concept plans. And then spring of 2023, we'll bring forward these two or three scenarios to be considered for development pathways. And then uh, with like more specific cost comparisons. Um, that sounds right. And so, yeah, I think I'm like, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, just to note that um, the consultants Wayne and Burke will also be on the city council's agenda for next week to give an update on kind of where they're at and some of the sort of assessments of the site and what's possible. Um, so that will hopefully feed kind of maybe some of the discussion going forward for the next round of um, comment. And so, yeah, just like, what is CJAC's role at this point? You know, if we provided support and saying like, here are some of the communities that we think makes sense to have you reach out to, you know, folks who, you know, that don't speak English as a first language, people who, you know, like, it's just like, we kind of provided a lot of those, um, you know, specifics as well as just kind of like the process conversations about like, um, what what are the barriers or incentives to pro to participation, um, and just really trying to support it being like a robust public process. Now that it's kind of rolling, is that our continued role is to just I mean this is like leaning into our next conversation about like the charter of CJAC writ large, um, and so um, do we do we want to continue just to like point people in. Um, by like asking questions of, of who should be prioritized as part of this conversation or, or is there more, like, is there a different role that we can see CJAC playing um, for both this process and then kind of leaning into what are our, what are our next steps? And I don't know, I'm also like looking at all the city staff on the call too of like, do you guys have a particular request or suggestion for us? Well, 
I can jump in real quick um, just to give a, a quick overview on, on my role in this in this process as well. Um, so I am I'm part of the team that is um, organizing and spearheading the country club road development like master planning um, process. And so my role in communications is to help facilitate that public outreach process. Um, so I we like we are going through the process. We've, we've done our the phase one outreach and now we're gearing up for phase two. And so we're, we're again kind of reevaluating and making sure we um, have identified a, you know, a vast and expansive um, group of community stakeholders. And so I am, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm still learning the different roles of each committee because there, there are quite a few. Um, so forgive me if I, uh, if I don't quite understand the, the nuances of this one, but the way I am imagining um, the this team, this the city's team, um, coordinating with the various committee chairs and like using that network, like we all have a network where we are um, where we know folks. So like I know you know I, I can just imagine each person on this committee has has their own you know groups that they're associated with, and so if we like envision just that hub and spoke model, where as new communication and updates from the city materialize, I would help facilitate the distribution of that um, information. And then so like one of the functions would be um, sending those updates to all the committee chairs who could then help disseminate that information to their, their various networks. That makes sense. Jeremy, for you. Yeah, I have a question about the uh, the outreach engagement sessions that happened this fall. Um, any sense of the demographics of attendees to that, like numbers, kind of which? Yeah. So anecdotally, number? anecdotally, it was mostly older folks, um, like part of I would say just about to retire or retired folks. Um, we are still trying to robustly um, involve parents and folks that would be interested in recreation just because that was part of the bond focus. And so we really want to prioritize the voices of the people who, um, you know, would, would have the most interest in um, participating in this project, but also reaching out to folks, um, you know, who, who we just we have not seen um, represented yet, which is younger folks. Um, and again, trying to coordinate with like the school communities is one of our big priorities right now, because it's obviously a great place to, to reach a lot of younger folks and parents at the same time. Um, so yeah, that's anecdotally, it's, it's older folks with more time on their hands who have been participating. Mm -hmm. okay, and I, can I assume that, um, People involved in this also include the uh, folks working with home, the homeless population, um, and and also the, I guess the Department of Parks has, would have a. So are they on the planning committee or are they just on the on the in the wings? So we had a meeting with um, the different boards and commissions committee chairs, and so they were at Parks and um, um, like the Tree Board and. Other folks in in that area were part of that conversation, and so we we had initially asked for feedback for the initial phase one um, to come in by uh, by today, just so we would then have sort of um, a body that we could work with for to aggregate the next steps. Um, and so that does not mean that the um, like our listening sessions and feedback is is ended. It's just we wanted to um, to have that really robust push first to, to make sure that we we kind of hit all the all the different nodes um and so as we move into phase two we're kind of you know we're, we're winnowing down that um the consensus of of that feedback okay and i just want to add to that michael that's what i was thinking about too is not only the homeless population but also you know, the folks that are most difficult in my experience over the years to reach and get feedback from are people who are in financial poverty, right? Like the people who are the the, um, the most disenfranchised 
just finding ways to to reach them and the way that we you know the way that you do it so uh shana when you were mentioning barriers to participation in these forums and that sort of thing you know in my experience providing food and child care at every one of the events makes it actually mm -hmm. possible for some of those folks to show up giving them some incentives and um which is why of course we do the the incentives for people to join committees on the for the city um so to me, that that is a focus like that's where I think we need to just continue to be looking at what they're doing and constantly reminding them that this is a, a group of people that if we want them to actually feel like they belong in the community and that they're going to have a place in this new place, um, then w w they need to be considered and they and we need to say, you know, who these people are, we need to name who they are so that we break down the barriers and and um and try to lighten some of the stereotyping that happens in the community and yeah. you know and and it seems like we're always we we you know it's great to go for parents and families they're probably going to end up being the ones that use it the most but in my mind it's not okay to just target that population because that's where we think we're going to get the most feedback right like let's really make an effort to find a, a new way to reach out to the other the, the other folks. Yeah, I think that's really well said, Carol. Thank you for sharing that because it's exactly where my my head is on this. I mean, there's already a, a perception that Montpelier is only for a certain kind of class of people and is increasingly pushing other classes of people out because of affordability issues. So I, I would hate for this process to kind of reinforce that. Um, the question I have is, you know, for whatever reason, we haven't been able to kind of put this on our plates as a committee to focus on. In terms of the process, though, are there still moments at which we can influence the process itself and some of the kind of action that's taken to include a more diverse group of, of stakeholders in the feedback sessions? Yeah, I would say there's definitely, um, there's always an open line of communication through Josh Jerome. So he is the community and economic um, development specialist here in the city. And he's um, the the primary person who is organizing the feedback and, um, and collecting public input. Um, so reaching out to him is a, is a great um, uh, tool. And, and Kelly, if there's anything else that I'm um, missing or that you wanted to add in addition to that? Um. No, not at this point. I mean, I think that, um, you know, really, you know, I think it's engaging um, folks uh, that, that haven't been involved. And there's there's um, definitely quite um, a, a lot of populations that just haven't been engaged yet. Um, and so I think that that's where the work of this committee could be particularly helpful in sort of identifying, you know, what's missing just so we do get a full picture. Mm -hmm. um, and then in terms of um, this particular item, but then also thinking about, you know, other items and, you know, how this committee could be useful. I think um, I was just thinking about the stipend policy and how great that has been um, and is starting to get traction. Um, and so it's ideas like that, that I think um, you know, maybe perhaps in the future staff could bring forward for recommendation to help um, get people engaged. Um, so we, I think, could work on developing a strategy. And also, like, um, everyone is also welcome to contact me as well, because I um, am helping facilitate both the, the external communications of this project, but also um, internally within city staff as well. So please feel free to, to reach out to me anytime. Uh, especially with um, with ideas and brainstorming, like like Kelly said, this is um, like tapping into everybody's specific um, strengths and unique networks is is super important. And and I'll just issue a reminder about the five thousand dollars that we've been awarded uh, one time money to use specifically for DEI efforts, and the Department of Corrections has really not given us any guidelines about how to use that. So we can use it for strategic planning. We could use it for incentives. We can, as long as we show it on a separate line item in our expenses. So that money is potentially available to do, you know, a portion of this work. So 
when I'm talking about, you know, child care and stipends, if we set something up so that we can get the folks that we want to get to the table, we could use the money in that way, as long as it's specifically for addressing inclusivity, um, you know, in, in these efforts. So I, and, and I'm really, we at the Justice Center, we haven't figured out like exactly what, what we want to do with that money. Um, and, you know, it needs to tie into what we do and restore, you know, with our processes and um, the people that we serve. Um, but I could see that as being a really great use of some of those funds. I'm wondering if this is an okay time to transition to talking more about our committee charge, more writ large. Um, because yeah, I think I, it's sounding like there's nothing kind of new coming up and maybe it's just circling back to Josh to remind him about what what we have offered of like the list that we have on the equity audit of communities in Montpelier to be reaching, doing that concerted reaching out to, bumping that creative discourse email, um, and then of just like how to connect, right, of offering the stipends of um you know doing that like specific outreach to you know specific folks in the community um and so i think i can i can just like put that on my to-do list to like bump those things and then um why i'm kind of wanting to transition to talking more about the committee charges because i feel like it's kind of it's 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 pretty integrated here so as you guys know cjac was formed in 2018 with the tasks of you know, identifying and nurturing projects, engaging in a broad range of city residents, um, and partnering with the city and groups on working on equity and justice for the long term. And like specifically of like supporting dialogues to engage broad range of community members and listening to others' experiences, attending committees to assist members in recognizing, um, just looking at the charter now, uh, uh, unintended negative impacts of policies and unconscious language, right? So we've had like the equity audit um, or the equity um a uh, policy assessment, um, and then um, basically like taking on new tasks as needed, essentially. And we've had a number of vacant seats for quite a while, and we haven't really been prioritizing filling them be until after we had the stipends process in place, and until um, um, we kind of have a little bit more of like what we're like wanting to have some more of that direction, right? So because we had creative discourse, do an initial, so we kind of got started in 2018, got funding to do the audit and did the audit in 2019 to 2020, kind of got that work plan in 2021, which was focused on like housing, police review committee. Um, I don't have that pulled up right now. Sorry, here it is. Um, uh, yeah, like the operational, relational, and structural changes that were recommended with some of the specific recommendations. And kind of coming out of that process, there's like the housing committee, there was the police review committee, there was kind of all of these other structures coming out. And we've been kind of, I would say, struggling a little bit to figure out what is our role and kind of like the next steps, right? Creative Discourses said we're not going to be doing kind of the other uh, we're not moving forward with the other processes coming out of the equity. You know, there was going to be the equity assessment and then some other processes. And there, you know, we, we've been doing some of those processes in other spaces specific to the the need, but not of kind of doing the the big picture. Um, uh, big, you know, it's, it's it's mostly like leaning on staff, leaning on the housing committee, leaning on the police um to kind of implement some of these structural changes that were being recommended. And so now, at, you know, this is just, this had gotten brought up at one of the meetings that was not, you know, and like not an official meeting as just like an, a, an initial discussion point of like, we keep getting approached as CJAC, as people saying, can you do a DEI training for our committee? Can you do, can you connect us to, you know, folks in, in the community? And of just saying like, those are not the things that are in our charter. And so, you know, do we want to rewrite our charter and recruit new members based on these new priorities that city members have been approaching us with? Do we want to fold the committee and incorporate the committee's um, charter into kind of these other standing committees? Um, and just like wanting to think of other kind of creative options, kind of recognizing these, um, these issues um, that have been coming up about our our committee charter. 
So let me pause there and maybe see if there's any other kind of like identifications of problems um, before moving into solutions too. I guess my observation is we definitely seem to be adrift. Um, and I, I think while we should, there's, a, there's some degree of self-determination here. I, I guess in my time, I've not felt a lot of engagement from the mayor or city council at large. And that's um, excluding Lauren, who's, you, you're awesome. You're, you're such a good, important component of this committee. But in terms of like a larger conversation in this in city council and the mayor's and the mayor, um, it, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of specific requests coming our way or direction about where we should be focusing our energy. Um, and that's my perception. Um, I'm not, there's probably a lot of conversations I'm not a part of, of course. Um, so I'm just curious about that. And what does that say about you know, our place in the ecosystem of city government. Um, and th that for me is like contributing to this feeling of like, I don't really know what we're supposed to do. So. Yeah. Michael, were you gonna say something too? Right, I think we the first things that we started with were specific requests. There was the one about, um, um, Oh, living wages for all city employees. And um, I took that on and did a study and sent that to the committee. But that was a specific, you know, task and that it was good to have that. And then nobody else on the committee at that point was interested. But but nonetheless, I mean, there, that was where we were. We really have to put in a, a, some advice. And I agree with Jeremy that you know, it's a little bit difficult other than monitoring what we have already uh, reported through the through the creative discourse and see see what's happening with the implementation of that. Um, I'm not sure what we're doing either. I guess it's been my assumption that that this team would take the next steps from what was learned with creative discourse and and create something um, to put, you know, out for the community. So, you know, where I'm, where I come from, I feel like, because we train a lot of volunteers and we're introducing these ideas about diversity and inclusion, um, you know, as, as in the ways that we can. Um, so I'm always thinking about like, how are we reaching folks in, a, and in, a, in addition to our volunteers, like how are we, we reaching folks in the community? Like how, how can we provide, um, you know, some kind of forum or educational piece to just, uh, or to set up conversations where people can get together and talk about their differences in a way that um, is non-threatening and, you know, what are, because I think that people, need to, we still, I think a lot of people still need to do some internal work around identif even identifying, you know, where, um, what the issues are that are causing um, people to feel separate from each other. So I think about like, what is, is there a next step? And is there something that can be created from this team taking the information that was learned from de creative discourse what in, and put that together and um, in some way benefit the community. I don't know exactly what that looks like, but that's my interest in. Hey, hey. Uh, Sorry, the dog, I did something dropped off my desk. <laughs> that was what I was saying about, I didn't mute. Sorry, Michael, go ahead. Sorry. Um, you know, I agree with you, Carol. And, I, and um, I, I, I'm starting to sound like a Johnny One note here, but I really feel as if we've been hobbled by the fact that we cannot get names of names and contact from the people who served as resources to the to the to their study if 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 they already know about us those people because creative discourse told them why would they were being contacted but the fact that we can't go forward on our own makes it very difficult to do what what I think Carol you're suggesting and that I agree is very important what else is out there that we don't know about um, and you know, it, it looks as if, and I and and I agree with the, you know with Jeremy that we have kind of fairly limited 
scope in, in, our, in our own contacts that bring us into direct contact with most of the people we were trying to reach. So well, I think I don't know what to do next about that. And, uh, and then I, well, that's all I'm saying. I don't know what to do next about that. I think, Carol, what you were recommending is is not how I understand what is our charter. And I think that is what we have been approached for for doing, right? Of doing this education of like doing, you know, I think like our, our charter is more of like creating the structures and the systems to be able to bring in like actual experts on doing this work. And that like, we're not bringing that expertise. And that's where I'm like, if we, I think if we wanted to change the charter to do more of that education outreach, providing the spaces to be able to have some of these hard conversations, doing the trainings, um, then I think we would need to change our charter and our membership accordingly. And I think we haven't like had that conversation, but like, I know, um, I, yeah, that's, so I think that's one option. I think another option of what we could be as, as a, as a committee is to be more ad hoc. And like, I think we, 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 Okay, well, or we could continue kind of with what you're saying of like continuing the work of creative discourse and of doing that. And I think what I'm, I think I, I've been reflecting what I heard Jeremy say too, is that we've been trying to do that really intensely since like February, March of like trying to figure out what is the next like project that we're going to tackle? What is the next like thing that we're going to take on? And we haven't really there, there hasn't been an outcome of that process and like recognizing we haven't had a lot of meetings and things like that, but like, and this has, this was started in, you know, 2021 too, you know, after we got the report in August from creative discourse. So this has been a little while of trying to figure out what that next structural thing is going to be. And so, yeah, I think there's kind of like, seems like there's three different options. Like we continue to figure out what the next thing is going to be. We continue to do that, like structural analysis. We change our charter and focus more on like doing like DEI training and DEI work, or we become more like an ad hoc committee where we, um, when we get requests from city council, we meet and talk like kind of more like the, like the fund committee, right? It was like, you know, once a year we like get together and we like work on a project and then we like disband based on, you know, we only, we only kind of get together when, when faced with these requests. I don't know if there's other options on the table, but that's kind of what I was thinking of, yeah, of my understanding is we, because we are an advisory committee our job is to collect data and advise city council not take an action maybe i'm wrong uh we can always go back our strategic plan our committee strategic plan and pull up things that we can work on uh, but the even name of the committee says that we can advise, right? Not take an action and go to, you know, do other things. I don't know what you think. Well, the other Jeremy, thing- where are you gonna, hearing, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Just the other thing I'm hearing in the conversation is that the not having um, input from city council or from the mayor's office in terms of priorities. So um, I know that, you know, I make note of that in my own brain that I don't hear talk about that at the, you know, from, um, from that level. Um, and I might just be missing something, but so I hear that, you know, that we can, so it's a chicken and egg thing, right? Do we advise and say, oh, this is what should happen? Or are we waiting for direction from, from city council and the mayor's office? And just to reframe that maybe slightly differently is like, I think we've also now created the structures where there's better spaces of different expertise to tackle some of these issues. Right now there is a housing committee. Um, now there is this like process, like parks process. So yeah, just to say that. I mean, my perspective, I'm glad we're having this conversation and agree with like pretty much everything that's been said, I would say from like the city council perspective, like my impression is there's like, okay, we funded and did the equity assessment and there was, and, and I would, I, I feel like most of the city councilors and the mayor, it's like, okay, we did this process. It's great. We were really like, excited to do that and assume that this committee is kind of an implementation mode of that. Um, I do think there's a lot of flexibility. Like, I feel like CJAC actually does come up a lot at city council of like, when we're talking about different 
public processes or, or, or things, it's like, it's kind of like, oh, we've got this committee <laughs> who can like help us think through it. I think, and, and I don't know if that's kind of like an excuse not to integrate it more fully in like every committee. Like it's, it's almost like, oh, we've got this committee. So great, we like check equity. So, you know, maybe it's a part but I don't think it is well integrated into other committees yet. The other ones I serve on, there is not a deep understanding of equity and like, there's a lot of work to do. So like, to me, the answer would not be disband this because, okay, we've done our equity assessment. It's like, I think revisiting our mission and having a really intentional conversation and plan and present that to city council. But I think we could drive what we think feels like the right next steps for given where the city is. I mean, there's, you know, the ideas that have been talked about, I think, you know, and agree that changing the mission could mean changing the structure of the committee. And I think council would be totally open to that. Like, I think they want this work done, don't really know how to do it. Like we know better than they do, um, I would say. And so I think it would be very open to like, what, what should the next phase of this work look like? I think the other piece that hasn't come up but could be a focus is like, yes, there are a bunch of other committees, but there's our ideas. Like one of the things that got in the strategic plan is like a just cause eviction policy. I don't, the housing committee is like so overwhelmed. Like maybe that would be something that this committee could spend time on instead of the housing committee that's working on, has a ton of other projects on their to-do list. Like, so there might be some more like, policy issues that are um, really getting at core equity issues that we look at the updated strategic plan and like, are there policy decisions coming up that we feel like we should play that important role in like, how would you shape it? Why, you know, is this a good equity policy? And if so, what does it need to contain to um, meet our equity objectives? Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jeremy left because I was just about to get to his the the uh, the tool that he sort of finally pulled into shape that we worked on for a long time. And what do we what can we do with that? Can we pass that now along? We passed it to the city council so that they have that as guide, as some kind of measuring stick for decisions and policies that they are making. Can we? intrude on the the committee autonomy to you know pass along that same uh, planning tool to each committee so that they they also use it uh, is there is there any other use for that particular document which i think is probably our, our our other most successful effort to advise the city uh, uh, on these and i and the other thing is well who is now monitoring the implementation of all the training uh, programs that were came out of result of, of uh, the creative discourse report. Um, I, I assume, Kelly, that that's part of your work. Is that right? Um, who, who, you know, who, who's got that place as a basically equity, um, equity guardian or whatever it is, equity consultants? I don't know. Um, so it's my understanding that we did, um, you know, work to implement, you know, the initial phase of the recommendations within the report. Um, and I think that there likely probably is sort of a next step that needs to be taken. And certainly that would, you know, flow through the city manager's office. Um, truthfully, in the transition, I think we do need to assess where we're at and where we're going. So it's, I mean, it's a good opportunity just based on the conversations here to kind of figure that out um, and make sure that we're reporting back on exactly what is happening or is not happening. Um, so that then you have you know, good information. Um, at this point, I don't have anything to share um, in terms of a status because to be completely honest, um, you know, I don't know um, what has, uh, wh where we're at right now. So I would need to do a status check for sure um, to see sort of what is in that report, um, what we've accomplished to sort of get like a, you know, a, a baseline benchmark and then go from there. And, and also evaluating what, yeah. what efforts were, were made. 
the, the audience response to the trainings that uh, were done as a result of the, the report. That would be helpful. It's sounding like there's definitely still a need for providing the ad hoc, like reactive support, kind of like with this example of the just cause eviction policy. I think when I've done like the outreach, yeah, when I've done the like, hey, committee, like, remember who we are here as CJAC people, I think that the, the kind of the response keeps being like, oh, yeah, like, we really need to like do a training for our committee. And we like need to do a training for staff. And we need to like, do more of this like training work. And we keep being like, okay, well, like, here's some groups that you could call to do it. And they're like, and there's like, you know, multi year long waiting list to get on any of like the lists that are doing this work in Vermont. And so I think, yeah, we keep being approached being like, can, like, we're, we're desperate. Can you do this? And we're like, that, you know, that is not who we are. We are not trained to do that. Like, is that, uh, that's a long way of me saying, <laughs> do we want to incorporate that into our, 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 um, our charter and change our committee makeup based on that? it sounds like the other two things I'm hearing yes and that one it's like I I just have I have no idea I yeah so how are other committees Shayna do you know that do they just do what you just suggested by doing changing our um committee mission and everything or how do they act what do, you know, do they advise like us or do they you know, take action, other committees? I, I think other committees have much uh, more, much narrower charges and that allows them to focus in on. I've served on several committees, city committees. Um, the police one was ad hoc and the police uh, committee was ad hoc and uh, had a limited lifetime and it had one specific goal. The foundation, the, uh, the, the uh, Montpelier, uh, not foundation, but the the community fund has a specific goal, you, you know, replacing all the ballot items and doing the, the work of screening those. Um, I was on the tree board for a while. I was on the, the conservation commission. Um, they, they're all very narrow. This is a, our charge is very broad. And I think that that's the problem that we ran into. We knew what to do first, um, respond to anything that came from the council. We knew what to do second. You know, give them some the, the tool that that they need to consider use when they're making policy. And the third was the the big report, um, and th and those were very focused, and they had a time timeline. And well, I guess the other big effect is the um, the stipend stipend policy, which I'd like to hear about a little bit more. But we, we don't have that kind of focus in our charge and. I either I think we really are at the the either or point. Either we have we, we create a, a, a bigger and more uh, explicit focus, or we just let the the city council basically say, okay, this belongs this problem belongs to this committee, and let them do it, and, and we pass along whatever it is that we have. And I think Jeremy's toolkit is the perfect thing to pass along to every committee. So that they they have they, they and the council are working together with towards, towards that end. I guess one thought on that. I mean, I think I think there are some committees that also have big charges, like address homelessness. Like that is a big charge, also very complicated, multifaceted, and I think those committees struggle more with trying to figure out, like CJAC, with like. How do we focus? Um, I mean, I think it could be like that we could look at our actual mission and rewrite it to be narrower and more focused and then just focus there. Um, you know, and a lot of committees meet like once a month instead of every two weeks. Like we've, so like we could take a narrower focus and like re reconfigure a little. Um, or I think it's also, like we just pick, I mean, it's, it's such a broad mission. We could say like, this is what, how we're interpreting it. This is what we think the 2023 priorities are. This is where we're going to focus, do a presentation to council just to reality check. Does this feel right based, you know, is there anything that seems missing? 
but and then just like go forward and I think council would be thrilled that we're taking the initiative to like be like this is how we're going to focus we have a really broad mission this year this is what we're seeing as the priorities um I mean I again like there's like the responsiveness and like the policy work that I think we can play a role and like handing off the tool. Like I do think that, you know, capacity around training and stuff, like the other committees I'm on, I think would struggle with implementing that tool without guidance and help and support to do that well. So how do we, how do we do that? And maybe that's a big focus is like a little more hand holding. So we're like, training the trainers kind of thing. Like how are we building more capacity across the city committees and government? And, you know, if, if at some point we put ourselves out of work, great. But um, I just don't think we're there yet based on what I see in the other committees. They, there's a lot of struggling with like wanting to understand the implications and a very, I don't know, superficial analysis from what I've seen of just, just cause people like it's complicated and hard and, um, it feels like a little bit far afield from the core mission of the other work that they're doing um, is how it comes across right now. I think there should be some consistency among committees. So if the idea having um, all the city committees to uh, allow them act like very specific task, then every committee should uh, have mission like that. If we think that, which my uh, my idea is like Karen, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Lauren just um, mentioned having broader mission and just pulling off things and okay, this is our focus for this year. Then every committee should be doing, um, doing the same thing, should have same approach. Otherwise, as Michael said, there will be so many different uh, way of doing things. Muted. That's why you can't hear me. Um, sorry. Um, of so when when do we want to be? When do we want to meet again? Because we usually you know meet every other week. That would put us to December twenty first. I think like our it seems like our our next steps from here would be to like pull together some more of like uh, that proposal, and I think I could maybe pull together something between now and the next you know, I guess the seven, you know, the 16th, which would be the, you know, getting it on the agenda of like, you know, what, what could some of these changes look like and then to have something to work off of. Um, but I do think, I think I'm hearing, you know, we don't want to be closing as a committee. We think there is still value in us holding space for looking, doing this like evaluative work. There is still um, space there, there is necessary space for supporting other committees in their work. And that could be not doing like DEI training, but to do um, just like provide support and handholding and like the work that we've already created, um, but provide, yeah, providing more of that hands-on support. So I think, does that sound okay as the next step of like, we I'll, I'll, like, you know, just create some language to work off of um, to then to be able to bring to the city council in early 2023. Does that make sense? And Shane, I'd be be happy to work on that with you. Oh, great. Okay. Um, and then I know the 21st is the 21st. And so does that work for folks? Does that make sense? Um, I'm not going anywhere these days. So great. So let's plan on that. Um, so we'll get you materials um on the you know 16th 17th um sorry 16th and 17th and then that'll give us some time too to talk more about um something that got added to the other business part of the agenda and now it can be an actual agenda item is that michael's going to be on the um it's going to be the cjack representative for the police captain interview committee. I don't know what it's called. 
<laughs> something like that. But as like the CJAC representative to just if there are any specific questions that we want to make sure get asked or evaluative criteria that we want to identify before that. I'm hoping, yeah, it probably won't happen in the next two weeks if you haven't heard anything yet, right? I mean, I guess we have city staff on the call. Do we know, is that is that an okay to punt that? I probably would not scheduled? punt that. I'm, I'm not okay. sure if we've got anything on calendar yet, um, but I- But it's coming do, up. But I do know that um, the intent is for us to get something scheduled. So if that hasn't happened yet, Michael, um, I do think that it will be happening soon. Um, sorry to be cryptic because I'm not trying to be yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or trying no, to be helpful, sense. but I think, um, and I can check my calendar too to see if I've got anything on there at this I just point. Didn't um, budget our time appropriately. Um, yeah. Do can folks stay on for five more minutes? Yes. Okay. I have for, to for Shane, what I can do is I can follow up with you too to give you sort of a timeline on what that looks like so that I've got the exact um, dates. For the police, interview. yeah, that is, yeah. there is a time for that. I thought. Oh, no, I, I thought I saw one come across the wire well, too. No, I, 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 I don't know. I have my calendar available, but um, I got something about um, a, a meeting, uh, at least a, um, a a Zoom address, but I don't know if there was a particular um, time for that. Yes. The 12th of December 12th, police yeah, chief at, interview. At, at 10 o'clock? One, one to two. One to two, okay. Okay, that's coming up real fast. All right. Yep, yep and I've got that on my calendar <laughs> too, Michael. So yeah, yes, confirmed. Sorry, thank you. I didn't need to actually delay. Thank you for giving me the time to take a look at that. So Great, we won't put that on our agenda for next month, <laughs> next meeting, but we will talk about it right now. Go ahead. So if anybody has any any suggestions for specific questions that I should pose to the candidate, what, can they send them directly to me? Is that allowed under the under the rules? Do you know, Kelly? I think that as long as there's not an exchange. Okay. Um, and it's more of a repository, then it should be okay. All right. So if anybody has any specific questions, please send them to me quickly so that I have uh, I'm ready to go into the because I'm I'm going representing CJAC. So I specifically the request had gone to Shana and Shana passed it along. Well, just, so. yeah, because you were on the police review committee. I feel like, yeah, that made total sense to me. I think I was just, yeah, thinking of like pretty like broad, like open-ended questions about like how, you know, yeah, how do you, um, I, I mean, yeah, I think like, you know, as, as we all remember the last um, police chief, process was kind of happening right at the very start of the um, uprising in summer of 2020. And so, and of just like, I think a lot of, um, I, I felt that there was not necessarily like the communications around like um, recognizing this like moment in history of, of, you know, countering like racialized police violence. And so I, I like, I, if there's like an open-ended question around like, um, you know, yeah, how, how do you, you know, I, I don't know what the language would be, but of just like having some, one or two open-ended questions about like, how, how do they see their work as critical, like as a critical role in, um, in, you know, like in providing an, like, a um, questions that are not necessarily about like safety, but about community and about how, um, how, how, yeah, some, something along those lines, but I don't have any type of question language written out and I will probably not do it today, but that's, yeah, okay. want to make sure that something like that gets asked. <laughs> yeah, well, we have a few yeah, days, but, it's, it's, um, so yeah. if anyone uh, thinks of anything. Yeah, maybe one question could be about budgeting, right? We know that um, city had to cut down uh, budget, uh, so what's the plan? Because sometimes money <laughs> money is so important to do things so is there any plan <clears throat> to work efficiently uh with the less number of um workforce and uh money or budgets whatever we call it i wonder too just and i just i'm not gonna have time to like write up a question i'm sorry it's so much going on right now but um I mean, I think just like looking at the CJAC mission and like something about like the core values that the city has expressed in, you know, as your role as the CJAC member of the interview committee as like important priorities and values of the community and just like 
to Shana's point, like an open-ended question of like, what have you seen um, working so far in the police department to advance these values? And what would your priorities be to, you know, be, be through the police department working to build a more equitable, inclusive um, community? And how do you see the police department's role in that or something in that vein? Okay. <clears throat> I guess Thank we could... You. Uh, and they had done some training as a result of the police overview and uh, and the and the CR report so the CD report so I can ask about that because he's been part of it of course and um, okay that that gives, that gives me enough and so it's a pretty large committee so probably none of us will have more than one or two questions that we can get we can get stuck in the in the in the time that is a lot it's only an hour so that's that's not a lot of time, but thank you for that. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, thanks for taking this on. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so see you all on the 21st. Um. Yeah, I think that's Could, it. One last thing. Could we get some, Kelly, you said that the the stipend report is really working. Can we get something to talk about on uh, uh, for that meeting? Get some, some firm information? Yeah, sure. I mean, I can certainly, are you thinking that you'd like um, detail on maybe year to date spend and number of people uh, enrolled? Is that kind of? I think that would be useful for us to, okay. to know how this is, how, how it's going, what numbers and. and what. I will certainly try to get something prepared um, for the 16th. I, th I think I can do that. Um, we are also under budget development right now. So there are. Um, multiple requests um, for my time, as I'm sure you can imagine. This shouldn't take me very long. So long story short, I will really try to get something into your packets, um, sort of a quick memo of where we're at um, with it, um, and then go from there. Thank you. Thanks so much. See y'all. Bye, everybody.